Hello guys and welcome to a new episode. I'm so happy to have you here with me today again. As you saw from the title, we're going to talk about forgiveness and the subject is just going to be the first part today and then next week we're going to talk about the other coin, <laughs> side of the coin, and it's going to be the second part. But let's talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness is such a short word but with such a great impact. And um, as somebody was saying, uh, forgiveness sounds so spiritual and mature until you actually realize you have to do it. Maybe for you it's easy, or maybe for you in the situation there right now, it seems completely impossible to forgive. What is forgiveness? I asked on Instagram, which if you don't follow, you have the link down below, you can follow me on Instagram. I do post things. I post things in Romania, but I also Romanian, but I also post things in English. Or you can always use the translation help <laughs> uh, when it comes to writing. But some of the definitions that I receive when it comes to forgiveness um, from the people that I follow are as follows. Forgiveness is an action determined by a wish. Or it means a freedom from somebody. Uh, so, or setting free somebody from the prison of your heart. Forgiveness is a proof of the love that you have for God and your neighbor, basically. It's one of the hardest things. Sounds good. Does it sound easy? Does it sound spiritual? If we're talking just about an offense, like somebody said something mean about you, or you heard two people gossiping about you, it might be a little bit easier to go over and just forgive. But what happens when the gravity of the act is a lot deeper and a lot bigger? Whether we're talking about abuse, rape, whether we're talking about murder, or whether we're talking about infidelity in a marriage, those things hurt. And if you're in the middle of one of those episodes, forgiveness might seem completely impossible. Out of curiosity, I looked in the dictionary to see what is the definition of the word forgiveness. Do you know what I found? Forgiveness means setting somebody free from slavery or taking away the condemnation. It's really nice and I really love what Lewis Smith says about forgiveness. When you choose to free the person that did wrong to you of the thing that they did wrong to you, you are actually cutting away a cancerous tumor from your interior life. You're setting free a prisoner just to find out that the real prisoner was you. When you hear all of these things, it might seem nice, but if you're in the middle of a hurt right now, you might feel like slamming that phone or laptop off and never, ever hearing about forgiveness again. I asked on Instagram, why should we forgive? I'll tell you some of the answers that they were give, they, they gave me, the followers gave me. Uh, one of it is because Christ forgave me. Uh, first of all, because uh, you want to get rid, rid of a burden they carry, because it's a commandment, because it's a need, because he, meaning Jesus, loved us and forgave us. Uh, and through him I can forgive and love. As I said, Again, this answers does not help you in your situation and you might feel like throwing that phone or laptop or whatever, smashing it away because you had enough. Before we start talking more in depth about forgiveness, I want to tell you first and foremost that forgiveness does not diminish the bad that was the wrong that was done to you. Forgiveness does not take anything from the uh, enormity of the of the wrong that was done to you and then I also want to tell you if you are wronged if you were abused if you were raped if you were um, went through a trauma if you were betrayed if your spouse betrayed you I want to tell you that I'm really really sorry I'm really sorry that you have to go to that. God did not create the world, or the world in God's vision did not contain any of these things. And we were not supposed really to go through any of these things. And I'm really sorry that you have to go through hell. 
Because maybe if you have to go through some of these things, they feel like hell. And I'm really sorry that you have to go through them. want to validate your feelings and the event that happened to you. And I'm really, really sorry. If, never ever t- if nobody ever told you, I want to tell you that I'm sorry. And then I understand your feelings. But then again, we have to look at the Bible. We have to look at what God says. Because the Bible says, and Jesus teaches us in the, the Lord's Prayer, Forgive us as our, our sin, as we forgive our debtors. We can never forgive anybody. When we look at the situation from the perspective that I'm a saint, he's a sinner. That I'm a saint, he's the wrongdoer. But before we carry on, I want us to do an exercise together of imagining some things. Now, I'm going to help you. And if you can, but only if you can, if you're driving, if you're cooking, if you're taking care of a baby, please don't. But if you can, close your eyes and imagine what I'm going to tell you. We're going to go through an episode from the Bible together. And I want you to use your imagination and try and imagine it. We're in the upper room. Jesus has his last supper with the disciples. Remember that episode from the Bible? Now imagine it. It's this empty room where there's a table in the middle with the seats around because they were sitting on the floor in that culture. And Jesus with his disciples are around it. The disciples are fighting about who's the greatest in the kingdom. Jesus is hard. He's heavy. He knows what's going to follow in the few that evening and the days coming afterwards. He knows the hell he has to walk through. He knows it beforehand. His heart is heavy. His disciples are fighting about who's the greatest in the, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And I imagine Jesus in those moments with his shattered heart heavy heart, knowing that he has to walk in obedience and teach them another lesson. So he gets up from the table. The disciples don't even realize that he got up. That's how engaged they were in their discussion of who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. I imagine him that he took the, the towel and a bowl of water and he goes down on his knees in front of Andrew. Suddenly, instantly, the room fell silent. All the murmur and the fighting stops. Everybody is just like almost stopping to breathe because they don't understand what's happening. Jesus, the teacher, in a posture of a slave, he takes Andrew's feet and he washes them. I can imagine that he was looking at Andrew and remembering all the instances with Andrew that Jesus had together. Probably he remembers Andrew's eyes and his expression when he saw the multiplication of the fish and bread. Then he goes, finishes with Andrew and he carries on. Next to Andrew sits the big James. Big James, (laughs) his passion. While he's washing his feet, Jesus is is remembering with how much passion James wanted to pour fire out of heaven to kill those Samaritans. Oh, big James. Then he goes to Thomas and then to Matthew. Matthew's eyes are in tears. And then Jesus gets to Peter. Peter is normally his quickly reacting. No, master, how can you wash my feet? Jesus is explaining to him that he's doing something he doesn't understand yet. And then Peter lets him. While he's washing his feet, Jesus is remembering Peter's courage and eagerness to walk on water and his desperation while he was drowning. This Peter is pretty special. Chosen for a special mission, just as each and every one of them were. Then Jesus goes down on a knee in front of Judas. How is it Jesus is hard? He knew that a few, in a few hours, these disciples of him, to whom Jesus gave his best. He tried to help Judas with his money problem. But Judas never took the courage of being transparent with Jesus. Remember we are in the room watching this episode happening. And while I'm there, I'm starting to judge and condemn Judas. And while Jesus is lovingly washing his feet, through my mind, I'm thinking Judas, the sinner, 
the betrayer. How could he? In an instant, as if I just blinked, I feel something on my feet. I'm opening my eyes and I realize I'm actually sitting in Judas's place. And Jesus is washing my feet. You see? When we compare with each other, we think in terms of I'm better than he is. Or he's worse than I am. I can say I'm the victim. These guys from my past are the abusers. But when we look at the bigger picture, we realize, actually, my abuser and I, the victim, we are both sinners in the need of a savior. Each of us was a Judas. Every sin, every lie, every judgment, every lust, every jealousy, every coveting in our hearts was actually the betraying kiss that we gave to Jesus. When we think in terms like this, I think we realize that we are not the saints and they are the sinners. Me and my abusers, because there were two in my story. We all need, we are all sinners in need of a savior. When we realize we are also sinners, we can kind of go through the situation we're facing from a different light. How can you forgive? You see, first and foremost, you can never do it with your own determination. You can only truly forgive when you're doing it, when you realize you just to have to cooperate with what Jesus did on the cross. You just have to work in cooperation with that. By yourself, it will be impossible to forgive your abuser, your betrayer, your person who did whatever they did to you. But then how do I actually forgive? Do I have to feel I forgave? Do the other, does the other person have to say that he's sorry? What do I do if I don't feel like I forgive? I'm going to try and answer some of these questions. Jesus never said in the, in the Bible, he never said in the Lord's Prayer, you know, and forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. When the debtors come and say sorry, or he never said to Peter, you have to forgive 70 times 7 every time the person comes and says sorry. He never did that. He just says we have to forgive. So to answer that question, forgiveness does not, is not dependent on the other person. And you know, the other person does not have to say he's sorry. He might never be sorry. None of my abusers of the two ever said they, they are sorry for what they, the wrong they did to me. And the wrong they did to me was big. It impacted me in many ways and in many areas of my life. And we're going to talk more about this in the videos following. Uh, they stole my innocence and uh, stole a lot of other things from me. But I never said they are sorry and I still forgave. How do we forgive practically? First and foremost, we have to understand the two vital parts of forgiveness. You see, forgiveness is an event and also forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness is an event. You, you just decide, you make a decision that you want to forgive the person that did wrong to you. I remember the first the moment I decided to forgive the person, my childhood abuser, like put it like that. It was a Thursday evening, we were in church. We had a, a, a weekly meeting on Thursday, a prayer meeting. And at that prayer meeting, one of the um, prayers was dedicated for this guy's family. His wife was pregnant, he got a family in the meantime. I was in middle school, yeah. So it was pretty much recent to the abuse when he stopped. But it wasn't right then, it was a few years. I remember I was in middle school, meaning ranging from age 12 to 14, sometimes in there. And um, he got a family, he had gotten a family in the meantime, and his wife was pregnant, and the baby had serious health issues, almost with zero chances of life. Not almost, with zero chances of life. And we were asked to pray for them. And I remember my sincere prayer, it was just like, it just burst it out of my heart before God and I said, Lord, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but the idea was Lord, Lord, don't keep the wrong of these guys against his child. I pray for completeness, for life of the child and the mother. And although he abused me, I pray that you just don't keep this as a score for his child. Um, that was the moment I decided to forgive. It was an event, a decision. Unfortunately, the baby did not survive. It died during the pregnancy, but 
something changed in my heart. I also remember when I was at a Bible college in the second year of um, IBTI, I had some counseling session with Eliana, my, my mentor at the time. And Eliana, if you're watching, thank you so much for taking the time with me. I remember that I talked a little bit with her about all the mess that I went through. If you don't know what I'm talking about, obviously go and watch the first episode, but all the abuse I went through. And I remember her at one point asking me if I want to forgive, especially the, the guy that wronged me in my teenager years. And then I just basically said this almost like a prayer, if you wish. But I remember saying it out loud and I said, I, Alex, choose to forgive you, and then I said the guy's name, for abusing me, manipulating me, using me, and whatever I felt in those moments to say. I just took a decision. But a decision is not complete or say enough. Do you remember the Bible verse that says, I think it's in James, that we can give life or death with our mouths what we say with our mouths is very important and it's quite powerful and in situations like this it's really powerful so what I want to challenge you if you decide that you want to forgive take some time it might not be now it might be tonight when you can put your kids to bed or when you can get home from work or whatever Close yourself in the bathroom if you need to, so you can have some privacy. Just you and God. Not with your husband, not with your spouse. Just you and God. And just to say out loud. Even if it's a whisper, it's enough. And you just pray and say, God, I want to forgive this person. And then you, you just say it out loud. I, you say your name, choose to forgive you. And you say the guy or the person or the woman, the person that did wrong to you. Choose to forgive you and you say the name for, and you have to say what you choose to forgive them for. It's as simple as it sounds, but it's as powerful as you could not imagine. There's power in it. That's a decision. And that's the part of the event of forgiveness being an event. But forgiveness is also a process. Have you ever forgiven and then after a while you met the person and you're like, huh, there's some feelings in there and I thought I forgave that person. Or maybe you walk somewhere and you were triggered and brought back and were like, huh, I thought I forgive that person. Part of this process, or this process, or all of these events are actually part of the process of forgiveness. And it took me quite a while to get this. I could not remember or I could not understand why if I chose to forgive the person, there are situations when I'm triggered and then I go back to the event. I already chose to forgive. So I'll give you some examples from my life because maybe they will help you make it clear. I chose to forgive the guy that abused me as a child on that Thursday evening at church, right? And it was a decision. But then in my teenager year, before the second abuse happened, I had all these fears of going in different places. Or I could not sleep for years. I could not sleep with the light off in my bedroom. I had to have a sort of, I used to use a lot of the laptop because it wasn't such a big light and I could use the battery, but I had to have some sort of light in the bedroom for me to be able to fall asleep. And in those moments, as I was triggered or I was impacted by the event that happened in the childhood, I had to choose to forgive. The way the event that happened in the childhood was affecting me then in my present. This is part of the, of the forgiveness process. Because there's all these situations that you're finding yourself in or, and you're triggered. It could be a smell, it could be a place, it could be a song, it could be so many things that could trigger you or affect you. And then you have to choose and forgive again. And you're putting another stone on that path of forgiveness and you're saying, okay, I forgive you, blah, blah, whatever his name is, because... Because of the abuse that you did to me in the childhood, now I can't sleep with the light off. The process of forgiveness does not have a certain path. It can spread over years because there's just ways that it might impact you and you did not know it impacted you. 
I'm going to talk in one of the episodes in which the abuse that I went through in my childhood and in my teenagers affected my marriage. Obviously, I didn't know until I got married and was faced with the situation. And I had to, again, choose to forgive for the way that abuse was impacting me in my present. The best moment to forgive is right now. There's no time like present. And forgiveness does not have to do with the other person. Probably they're not even sorry for what they did. Or if it's a smaller wrong, smaller. Might seem smaller, depending on what skills, but that doesn't make it less painful for you. They might not even know that they hurt you. So choosing not to forgive is if you're tying that person with a chain. You're tying it to his leg and to your leg. And everywhere you go, in every relationship you enter, whether it's a friendship relationship, mentorship relationship, marriage relationship, you're dragging that person with you. And basically what forgiveness does, it just cuts the chain loose. <laughs> and it lets the person to be part of the past and you to be free to move in your future. Next time we're going to talk about what forgiveness is not. And I just pray and I hope that everything that we talked about will bring a bit of light. Always remember. What I want you to remember from this video is that forgiveness is a choice. It's not dependable on the other person. It does not diminish the wrong done to you, not even a little bit. And it's made out of two parts. There's the event of forgiveness and there's the process of forgiveness. And this process of forgiveness is just little, little events that happen on your path where you choose to forgive the way that the event is impacting you now in your present. What you think? I would love to hear your comments. I'm not sure if the comment section will work on this video because YouTube chooses to do whatever they choose to do. But if not, if it does, if it works, I would love to hear your comments. If not, you'll find me on my Instagram or Facebook page. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear if it helped you what I said um, or just whatever you feel like sharing. I am not a professional counselor, so I don't necessarily know how to guide you through your story. But I'm just hoping that me, by sharing my story, will be a help for you in your story. Don't forgive to, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and the bell button because I'll be sharing the next week a video about what forgiveness is not. And yeah, I would just really love to hear from you. Don't forget to have today that talk with God because remember there's no, like, there's no day like today for you to forgive. I'm praying that just God that will comfort you and he's really gentle. God is a gentle God, loving, gentle God. And um, I'm praying that through this process, you get to, to meet God like that. And yeah, and I'm just having you all in my prayers. I prayed even before I recorded this video that God will use it to bring healing to other people. Thank you guys for sticking until the end. And see you next week with a new video. Bye-bye.